Pride has decided to go virtual for their 2021 celebration. And joining me now to talk about the event is the director of philanthropy, Serafina Scapicchio. Uh, Sorry, the teleprompter ran away from me. <laughs> Serafina, good to talk with you tonight. Wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, so let's first discuss, um, you decided, I remember having this discussion with you folks last year, obviously you had to go virtual then. What went into making the decision to go virtual this year? I mean, we, since, you know, day one after the, the day after our pride celebration, which was great, by the way, we had, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of people tune in, not just from San Diego, but all over the U.S. and all over the world. We immediately jumped into planning this year's. Um, so it's taken months of planning. But of course, we've been talking to our state, our city officials, our county health officials, just wanting to really make sure if we did try to do some things in person that, um, you know, it would be safe for all of those involved. And we all came to a mutual agreement that having a pride parade and festival and the ways that we've done it traditionally in years past um, just wasn't going to cut it for this year. Um, you know, as you already know, I'm sure you're reporting on the news every day, case counts are actually going up. Um, so we're just keeping a real close eye. And we decided for the safety of all, we're going to keep this year mostly virtual. Well, it must say that you guys had a um, good showing last year if you're willing to go after it again. And I mean, hey, after this past year, is it virtual our new normal? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've all become television producers in our spare time. So <laughs> uh, we have uh, hundreds of volunteers who have been working on, you know, video editing this year. We've had over 70 hours besides Pride um, of live, you know, streaming content. That's everything from, um, you know, how to build a resume to, um, you know, a celebration of different heritages. And we've had, um, you know, decolonizing self-care, all these interesting like self-help um, kind of things, ways for the community to come together all year long. Um, so we've been getting pretty darn good at it. So I will say that this year will be a little bit more polished and um, we have a little bit more tools in our backpack this, this time around. All right. So let's get into the date that it starts because I understand it's in July and what you have lined up. Okay, so as always, like we Pride is not canceled. We are going to have a full week of events, and it's going to kick off with July 10th, which is She Fest. Um, it's a women's event for the women's community. Um, there's going to be workshops. There's going to be singing. There's going to be dancing. There's going to be a pet contest. Um, so it's going to be a full, uh, <laughs> full variety of things for a little bit for everybody. Um, we have light up the. Cathedral on July 14th, which is our interfaith um, coalition. And then on the 17th, we'll have our Stonewall Rally, um, which is getting together all of our activists, all of our wonderful politicians, all of our wonderful folks who are making such a, a big impact. In fact, the theme this year for Pride is resilience. So we're going to be focusing on the stories of the wonderful people in our community who have really done an outstanding job, whether it's, um, you know, our first responders or um, um, even our community members, we've had community members, just regular old folks who decided we're going to do mutual aid, we're going to do groceries for people, we're going to sew masks and have done so many wonderful things. So we're going to be focusing on those stories of joy and resilience. Oh, I think that's just an excellent idea. As you are gearing up and putting, you know, the finishing touches together just a few months away, um, what do you really hope someone takes away from the week of pride? Well, I want them to take away a sense that your community is here. We didn't go anywhere. We know that LGBT people have been um, even more impacted than their heterosexual counterparts, right? Because they have some barriers to um, health care that other folks don't have. They have um, some economic barriers because we happen to be in some of the in industries that have been most largely impacted, like the hospitality industry. So we want them to know that Pride hasn't gone anywhere. We're right here for you, and we're here to celebrate so we can celebrate safely and we can celebrate together we just need to make some modifications um, and we're hopeful that they tune in um, and um, maybe you know order some some hors d'oeuvres at home to to watch mm -hmm. along and when it's safe to do so we will have some satellite events happening from uh, july 17th through 18th that will be socially distanced that will be um you know be within line of all the guidelines um and so if they have been vaccinated at that point and they feel safe enough to come and join us at a limited capacity event we hope that they 
also um, join us in person. Sounds wonderful. Going to be tuning in for that pet contest for sure. That's going to be adorable. <laughs> Serafina, thank you so much for your time tonight. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night.